all too often unions and employers uh, get in the room and they see themselves as adversaries when in fact they have an enormous shared interest for organisations to be successful. PS, from our point of view at the PSA we want the public service to be the very best it can ever be and we actually know that the places that are, that are working well are actually the best place to work in. So for us it's quite a simple equation. Why wouldn't we want first class uh, public services? We know the taxpayer will support them. We know they're less, less likely to go out of business. We know that they're the best place to work in and we know they're the best place to advance your career in. So it's quite simple for us. We want it to work and what we'd like to see as employers seeing the union as an opportunity rather than a threat. Uh, something to be um, developed and a, and a relationship to be um, nurtured rather than one to be sort of managed like it's a risk. And very often we meet employers uh, who don't understand unions, they have a sort of a, a sense of um, danger about them and we have other employers we meet who know uh, they've had experience and they actually know that the leadership of a union is very important because uh, their staff usually most of which are in unions in the, in the state sector, actually rely on their unions to give them guidance and support and, and they're very important not to be left out of the room. Have you got an example of a great organisation in action at the moment? Well, there's a, there are a lot of examples. Um, I think the Auckland Council uh, is a very good ex example at the moment. They went through a huge restructuring uh, process to become the so-called super city, uh, where several legacy councils were uh, reduced to one. Um, what happened from the beginning there was that the uh, the uh, employer, uh, the transition agency, immediately engaged the PSA and said, how are we going to make this work for the people of Auckland, for management and for the people who work in the service? And we were able to provide shoulder to shoulder with uh, that employer rather than head to head, a real sense of stability, certainty and um, a real commitment to a good outcome and, and we work very hard on that. Since then we've built a real platform of trust I think with uh, that employer and uh, now we're really embarking on quite a radical uh, partnership approach to um, really transform Auckland Council to being you know, the, most, the world's most livable city. And w have you got ideas of, or examples should I say, of innovations that have resulted in the workforce and management with the workforce as, as a result of that partnership? Well, there, there are many things that can happen. There's sort of both large scale, for example, merging Auckland Council into, into one in, a, in, a, in just over a year was a pretty incredible kind of feat yeah. given the scale of it. But then there are small scale exercises too. Uh, in, uh, one of the things that we've been promoting is using high performance uh, tools. Um, we've developed our own system we call Sustainable Work Systems. It's a high performance uh, yeah tool based on lean practices which are the Toyota production system, we're saying that those can work really well so long as they're within a culture of high engagement and high trust. And um, the PSA uh, is very happy and uh, eager to work with employers who are saying, yeah, we want to work in a high performance way. We're saying, well, let's work together and co-sponsor a culture in an organisation which is dedicated to high performance. Mm -hmm. So we can actually work with employers, govern that process, encourage our members to get involved in it, train our delegates so that they can take a leadership role within that process, and they can work beside their managers to encourage their staff to really get involved in these things. One of the problems um, that we confront and we can't uh, pretend is not there is, is the history. And too many, uh, I think, too many public servants have seen change, wave after wave of change and restructuring. Our view is that we should work more on the culture of organisations and less on the structure uh, and start putting our energy in there because that's really the barrier. It's not, uh, people will get round the imperfect um, structures and the imperfect sort of um, processes uh, and work on them if you give them the licence, the encouragement and also the skills to work differently. This is not just about saying to your staff, well, what do you think? This is not just about saying to your staff, um, oh, I've got an idea, what do you think of mine, or even what's your idea? What we think we should go to is a place where we actually train managers, delegates, staff on how to understand their work, how to look for waste, how to genuinely get into that place where there's perpetual improvement, not people standing still and waiting for the next instruction. Too often people are waiting for the next instruction uh, and they do what they're told and they wait for the next instruction. That's old style, top down, last century management. What we want to get to is a place where people genuinely feel they have the authority, the permission, the responsibility to continually improve what they're doing.